Ladies and gentlemen, welcome as always to the Curtain Call Podcast. We've got a good episode today. I'm your host as always, Irish Neep. I'm joined by JR. What's going on, man? Too sweet. What's going on? What's going on, Jordan? It's a good time and good topic today. We're about to really get into it, man. Yep. Today's episode is going to be what's going on with NXT 2.0. Where do they go from here? We got some people leaving, some new signees from uh, you know wrestling and different backgrounds coming in. Are they going to start NXT? probably to be built up to be big stars. But today's episode is just going to be titled, What's Going On? What's the Future Look Like for NXT 2.0? I got to start with, though, we got to plug our new merch. We just launched some new merchandise. It's our first line. We got the NWO-style logo. You can get it in the black and white or the Wolfpack red. But yeah, if you want to know how to get this merch, just drop a comment down on the YouTube. We'll reach out to you. Um, We're waiting for the website to launch, so we're kind of doing this just by a DM and and uh, request form situation until we get the website up and running. Well, we're very excited about this merch drop, and uh, let us know if you want if you want any more details about that. We'll shoot you a message. But Jay, I'm going to throw it to you. Why don't you just get us started about what's going on with NXT? Let's do this, man. So as we all know, and as we all saw, the other day was War Games. By the way, we're not going to get into how how War Games was, but War Games to me was a phenomenal show. I enjoyed it a lot. But we saw something, an end of an era, no point intended. The following Wednesday, we saw Kyle O'Reilly take the loss, putting someone over as he works his way out. And then we see the emotional speech that Johnny Gargano gave. It's needless to say that Kyle O'Reilly has gone and Johnny Gargano is gone as well. So the question that I have for you guys is simple. What are your thoughts? On Kyle O'Reilly, and what are your thoughts on Johnny Takeover, Mr. Wrestling? So the easy option always is going to be AEW, right? And I've been saying this for a very long time that I do think that everyone from the Undisputed Era is going to end up in AEW at some point. Now, Johnny Wrestling, on the other hand, a lot of people are saying AEW, just but I think the man goes to SmackDown. I think the man goes to SmackDown. Raw would never know what to do with him. And the problem with Johnny Wrestling, let's just keep it 100, let's just be real, he might not succeed on the main roster, not to the fault of himself. Not to the fault of himself. It's all about how they're booked, storylines, characters. And let's be real, Vince doesn't have the greatest track record with people under like six feet tall. So um, I think he goes SmackDown. I think O'Reilly goes to AEW. Like I've been saying, everyone's going to end up there. They're going to have some form of, undisputed era reunion or something over there um but i think uh johnny wrestling goes to smackdown we'll see how it plays out for him but what are your thoughts about that so i've been saying it for a long time jordan in our private conversations and also while we've been making this video nxt 2.0 kyle o'reilly does not fit in nxt 2.0 you could kind of see that he checked out mental mentally wise he's already he checked out a while ago when his buddies left you yeah. can see that when they paired him with the new tag team, you can see that he just wasn't wrestling the same. It was showing in his performance. But at War Games, he showed a heck of a performance. And if you notice, once he did the Undisputed Era thing, you know, and did the crop chop and everything, it was kind of a way of saying, I'm out of here and this is where I'm going, you know? Um, I've always been saying AEW, man, he's he's going to end up in AEW. It's not a surprise to nobody. But I disagree with the people that say Johnny Wrestling going to AEW. He will get lost in the mid card. And yeah. that's the truth. And I can already hear the AEW fans saying, oh, you're hating on AEW. No, I'm not hating on AEW. But when you have such high top talent wrestlers and then you're bringing in Johnny Gargano into the mix, he's not going to be at the top of the card. There's too many right. guys up there, so he's going to be in the mid card, and it's not a good sign. Why? Look at look. Where did Jay Lethal wrestle last night? He wrestled in a battle royal and got kicked out three. Yeah, almost immediately. Yeah, there, and that's that's the former Ring of Honor Grand Slam champion, the Ring of Honor two title holding and heavyweight champion, and he got kicked out in a battle royal, and I. I, I don't even know who kicked him out. I don't know if it was Stark. I, I don't know. It doesn't even yeah. matter. What I'm saying is I think Johnny Gargano goes to, the, goes to SmackDown. I really think he goes to SmackDown. I think if you look at everything, if we look at Johnny Gargano, 
if we look at his career path, um, he is the heart and soul of NXT. In my oh, personal sorry. opinion, there is no question that he's the heart and soul of NXT. And I really think he has a really tight relationship with the people in the back that are batting for him, that are yeah. batting for him. You look at if he goes to AEW, he has to travel around constantly. Yeah, if he goes to SmackDown, he's got to travel around as well. But it, it fits him better in a sense storylines. He'll be able to get by. And it's almost like a Daniel Bryan type thing. But the difference between Daniel Bryan is Daniel Bryan got over because of the fans. Johnny Gargano gets over because he relates to the fans. Jordan, that, that speech he gave on Wednesday, man, how he said, I feel insecure. Right now, I feel insecure. If that doesn't touch each one of us, we relate to him. I think he goes to SmackDown. I don't think we've seen the end of Johnny wrestling in the WWE. He's going away. Let him have his kid. I can see him coming maybe WrestleMania or after WrestleMania. I think it'll be a nice pop. I think he's going to do fine in the WWE. Yeah, I could easily see maybe the night after WrestleMania is always a huge night. The, you know, call-ups, debuts, returns, whatever have you. Maybe night after WrestleMania, in that in that that crowd is always die-hard fans. And if he shows up at the night after WrestleMania, that crowd's going to go crazy. Jordan, let's call it. Let's call it now. That way, we can say we said it first. It will be nice to see him come in number three at the Royal Rumble and stay all the way towards the end. That'll give him a big push. That'll yeah. give him a really big push. And that the person that eliminates him is the one that's eventually going to win the title at WrestleMania. That'll make Johnny Wrestling stand out humongous if they yeah. put him in and he has a Ric Flair, a Shawn Michaels, a Stone Cold S run in that Royal Rumble, man. I'm down for it. Let's call it now Royal Rumble Johnny Gargano. I'm for it. There we, there we go. Next on the list, the last of the Mohicans, Tommaso Ciampa. What happens with Tommaso, man? You know, I don't know. We, we saw Braun Breaker kind of issue the challenge on Wednesday, um, saying that, you know, they're one and one. Um, I don't know, because this kind of feeds into the – we could talk about Ciampa. We could also talk about are they going to put the strap on Breaker immediately. I've been saying for a while this needs to be a slow burn. Take your time with Breaker. Don't put the strap on him too early. Um, I don't know, man. Ciampa's – because realistically, besides Braun Breaker, who is a good contender for that title? I'll wait. No, no, no. Take your time. Take your time. I'll wait. Nobody. There's zero. Nobody. Walt so Walter's Walter's too big for NXT. Right, I'm right. Sorry. So it's it's really a pick your poison. Do you risk, you know, putting Braun Breaker at the top too soon just to kind of move Ciampa to something else? Or do we just see Ciampa as a champ for a long time as they slowly build up Breaker? It's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't, because you don't want to push Breaker right. too soon, but then you also don't want Ciampa to have the title for like another year. I mean, Ciampa's doing incredible work, but do we want to see him just going through meaningless talent? I don't mean meaningless talent, but median meaningless contenders? Meteor I mean, I no one's yeah. on his level. Right. I mean, so what What, what do we have here? I mean, it's kind of hard to, to predict what, what happens to Ciampa. Do we see a, a, a Kevin Owens-style call-up where he comes up with the NXT title wrestles a few main roster shows as the champion like Kevin Owens used to do to kind of give them a shakeup while they're still building Braun Breaker up? I don't know. It's kind of a touchy subject, man. You know, I think you're, you're at, first of all, you're absolutely right. I think it's too quick to think of uh, Braun Breaker holding the title, which I feel like they're leaning towards. Um, and, and But right now, if, if, if the pencil was in my hand, I would actually look at people from the main roster that we're not doing much with and send them over to NXT where it can make a, a good battle for Ciampa and it can make him more credible. It'll build him up if he ends up does staying with WWE, which I hope he does. And by the time he gets called up, if he gets called up, it makes him look more of a of a bigger wrestler or something where people take him as, hey, this guy's trying to get a belt up here, um, whether it be on SmackDown or Raw. But for that to happen, you got to pick the right person. There isn't anybody in NXT right now. There's a lot of young talent, man. There's no one in NXT right now that can, that can actually do that. The only person, the only person that I feel that can do that in NXT 
is Roderick Strong. But it yep. can't be with Diamond Mine. You got to get him away from these guys, man. You can tell the look on his face. He doesn't want to do that, man. And 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 them going away from the cruiserweight name of the title. I, I don't know what they're all trying to do there, but I'm talking about the man himself is the only guy I can see doing it. I hope Braun doesn't get caught up for a while, man. I hope he stays yeah. down there for a little bit because you know how it is. You get caught up to the main roster, and, and then what happens? Yeah, look at, Karrion, good. look at Karrion Cross Had that incredible win streak, get calls up, loses his first night. His first night. Look at Hit Row. Hit Row was hot in NXT. They get called up. They didn't even get a month, and they're gone from the company. Like the ascension, and the, the ascension went undefeated in NXT so long, the longest reigning NXT champions, and then it became a joke on the main roster. It happens time right. and time again. I don't want to see Braun chasing the twenty four seven title. The guy has talent, man. My God, yeah. I haven't seen somebody come in so young, so fresh, and had that big of an impact. And I'm gonna say it right now, and I don't care if people get upset. The Rock did not have this much momentum when he showed up with the flashy colors and, and doing all this, he didn't have that kind of momentum. Stone Cold didn't have this kind of momentum. Yeah. This guy is a bona fide star, Jordan. He is a yeah. star. Let it the, take its time before they call him up. The last person that the last person I can think of that went through NXT that was young, had incredible star power. Yes, he had a lot of years behind him as different characters and stuff, but when he got into it, he got into it, and he was still young. Cancel culture, come after me. Velveteen Dream could have been on the posters of the main roster. He could have been the head of WrestleMania. He could have had the key to the company. Unfortunately, whatever happened or didn't happen, happened regardless. But Braun Breaker reminds me of him in the sense that he's incredibly young, and he's incredibly gifted. Like, on the mic, he's good. Um, in wrestling, like in the ring, he's incredible. But yeah, the last person before Breaker that like stood out to me very young and stuff like that was Velveteen Dream. And obviously they took their time with Velveteen Dream in NXT and it worked out. He became a massive yeah. star. Obviously, what you know, it ended badly. But um, yeah, Braun Breaker, just imagine if they book it slow and right when Braun Breaker finally dethrones like Ciampa. That's going to be a massive, massive moment. You know, it's funny you said that um, because... On a side note, that's what I had on my paper. I had Velveteen Dream. Um, I, it's it's whatever the rumors are, whatever was said. Man, he was such a he 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 was a he was great man. He was a great yeah. talent, and I've seen WWE do a lot of uh, uh, forgive and forget, and people can forget things. There are a lot of wrestlers that have done some really really messed up things, and we've allowed them to come back and we've embraced them and we've given people a second chance. I don't know what, what all the situation is, man. It, it would be nice if there was a way he can make his way back because the guy was talented, but you're absolutely right. I haven't seen somebody like Braun Breaker since the dream itself. And, um, it, it, slow, slow and steady, just slow and steady with him, man. That's how I 100%. feel. hundred percent. All right. So the next thing we have big news, WWE launching their NIL, which stands for next in line. Now they had a, 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 a tryout in Vegas and Jordan, uh, 15 people got signed. Now, for those of you that don't know what the NIL is, it's called next in line. What WWE is doing is they're using what the NCAA is now doing, where they're paying their athletes to use their name and their likeness and things like that. And, um, and, and being able to make an income while they're in the universities or in their colleges. So WWE is using that loophole and signing people just the way they signed, um, uh, Gabe from, uh, from Minnesota, the wrestler yeah. that just won an Olympic gold medal. He signed to WWE, but he's still at the university of Minnesota um, doing his final year up there, which, by the way, they actually made a wrestling ring campus for him up there because he's been training at the time. Now, this is something very interesting. The reason why I bring this up is because, yeah, it's cool that they're doing this, but are we seeing the end of, NX, of, of NXT? The reason I ask that is because out of the 15 people that they signed, no one is wrestling mindset. You got football players, you have track and field stars, you have shot putters, 
you have long jumpers there. And, and one of the, one of the things they were looking for, according to what the application was, they wanted to know how, how many people are following them on social media. It kind of shows you where WWE is headed to. Um, I think that could this be where NXT is going to eventually, do they put NXT on the network or on the Peacock and takes, take it all off of USA. And, and, and we have all these wrestlers coming in 15 wrestlers. WWE is not hurting for money. They're not. Right. Vince McMahon just wants to make people in his own image and his own likeness. So no, I don't think we see a lot more wrestlers coming from independence coming over to WWE as much. I think those days are done. Now it looks like they're going after college athletes, man. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think when you were saying that, who was the last star that they signed that was already established? Was it AJ? Was that the last one that we can think of that already had a name, already had popularity? That had a big name like that? AJ. AJ, right? Okay. Because you know, even when they signed Adam Cole, Adam Cole had a name. Yeah, he yeah. definitely made a name for himself, but maybe not as big as AJ. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's it's almost like, yeah, I don't know if it goes, if, if this is where NXT is headed, but it's like, at this rate, it's going to go back to like a game show. Like, you, you, we, we are, we are, we've said multiple episodes that we're all for young talent, all for building young talent, taking your time. But at the same time, is that's not all you want because that doesn't make for a good product if it's all people that, especially people that have no wrestling background, like zero. Like, you're right, track and star people, football players. Like, I get football players are a little closer. Like, like Brock Lesnar was football when he came in. Roman Reigns was football star when he came in. People like that. But, yeah, man, I don't know. I hope I hope that – do you know how, how regularly they're going to sign these people? Like, how – how often is this next in line program? Do you know? They just signed another female today. Okay. They released on their Instagram. They just signed another uh, a, um, track and field star. So they've got female basketball players. They have female track and field star. They have one wrestler that they signed that does college wrestling. Um, the other ones are football players. Yeah. That, that, that's it. That's it. There's no wrestling background. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say they can't learn it. Right. Obviously, but it looks like this is the role that they're headed down. Yeah, and I'm I'm all for signing amateur wrestlers. I mean, look at the past amateur wrestlers we've had. Uh, Kurt Angle, Shelton Benjamin, Brock Lesnar had some experience. Um, he, he was a he was a he was a state champ. Um, uh, Dolph who Ziggler. am I thinking? Dolph Ziggler. Ziggler. Yeah, Ziggler. Uh, uh, American Alpha. Both of those guys. Um, they've had a good track record with amateur wrestlers, so I'm all for that. It's when we get into track and field and and, and long jumpers. What? Well, why are we signing long? Like some of these people, it just doesn't make any sense, especially if they have zero background. I said you can teach this, but not a lot of people are going to pick up on it. You can only teach so much. Some of it's just like ability, like by itself. Like you either have it or you don't. Some people you can teach. I get that, but like I don't know, man. Like I said, I'm all for the amateur wrestlers, but the other ones have me a little concerned. Hey, one of the track and field stars that they grabbed, I'm not going to say her name, but what is she, I, I really don't know why they, I guess track and field is why they signed her. Um, but she has a following of 67,000 followers on her Instagram. Do you, okay. Do you think that some of those are, I know we're in, I know we're in a different era now. I know women's wrestling is a huge thing now and it's had a lot of success. Do you think maybe some of those signings are eye candy? There were some on there that was like, oh, wow, okay, very pretty, a pretty young lady. You got to understand, man, I'm in my 40s. My birthday is this Sunday. So <laughs> I, I I don't look at women that, that way. When I see a girl from high school or, or college, I think of my daughter. There's no way. So right. nah, I'm not going to her. And plus, my wife <laughs> is watching us as we're talking. But the second <laughs> – <laughs> I don't want to but put the, you in the doghouse for this yeah, episode. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> but the second thing is there were some that I was like. Yeah. But when I see 67,000 followers on, on Instagram, that's that that's the only reason WWE brought back uh what's her name? Um Eva. Eva Marie. 
yeah. then they let her go. They just brought her in for the following, get more eyes on the product and to let her go. And that's kind of what I said is, is uh, that's kind of why I mentioned eye candy is because yeah, let's be real. That's, that's all Eva Marie was like, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, no disrespect, but the, 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 the teases they had every week, that one week where she had like a wardrobe malfunction. Come on now. Yeah. Come on yeah. now. We know what, we know what you're doing here. Yeah, absolutely. So some of them were, some of them were, um, some of them were not. Um, and I, I'm, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to say that because I don't want somebody posting this and saying, oh, you know, the current call podcast said that the new signees are ugly. And that's not what we're saying compared to the, the diva ish look that they were, that they're known for looking for. Right. I didn't, I didn't see that. Um, but you know, I, I don't I don't know. I think this is a, a new era of uh, WWE signing these talents. And think about it. Just hear me out for a second before we move on. So WWE signs an independent wrestler, brings them in. They're going to pay them the money for somebody like, uh, let's say, uh, let's say Adam Cole. Adam Cole was getting paid good money. He was yeah. getting paid good money. But now you turn around and you sign a college athlete, which is not making no money. You sign them for the very low, and now they're happy because they're part of the WWE. They're, they're in the WWE. They're training to be a professional wrestler or a sports entertainer. And then all of a sudden, you bring them through NXT, not paying them that much. So when they finally get the call to the main roster and you start paying them big bucks, they're not making nowhere near as much as a normal wrestler that came into Adult Ziggler when he debuted or a Miz when he debuted. They can sign them on the low. I think it's a strategy uh, yeah. that they're doing um, to be able to, to really fix their bottom line and then tell their shareholders, look, we have a bunch of people that's the next generation uh, of this um, NIL thing that they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. But at the end of the day, regardless of their background or ability or whatever else, train them right. Yes, you can do. But another thing with the wrestling in general is just – you got to book them. You got to book them right. You got to make sure they have a good character that connects. Um, because let's be honest, like wrestling ability is great. You could be a great wrestler and still not like, like Gable, great wrestler. Did he ever really hit the potential? He probably could have. His character work was always a little eh. So you can hit great heights with being a mediocre wrestler. Like as long as your character is right. If you're, if you're a good promo, a good promo has carried quite a few people. Um, so yeah, it's more than just the ability. So if as long as they're booked right, you give them a good character, I think that could at least help a lot of people. Absolutely. And by the way, before we move on, the one bright side of the Las Vegas uh, tryouts was that one of the head trainers, which they're calling them, calling him an assistant head trainer. It hasn't been released by the WWE, but when they did the interview for the USA Today, the person that was interviewing called them that and it said that underneath their name Samoa Joe that That's was pretty cool one. to see I, I I like I don't know if Samoa Joe's trying to get back in the ring he did say he had big things going on I think he's making that transition over to being a coach but they called him assistant head coach I'm happy with that it was good to see Samoa Joe yeah no Samoa Joe is a good look for them if he's going to be uh kind of ushering the new generation expect in the ring he's awesome but especially on the mic and it kind Psychology. of, yeah, and it kind of gives me a little. When NXT was first starting, when they had Dusty Rhodes teaching people how to do a promo, yes. that was money. That's money right there. Yes. All right, man. Now we got to get into it. Liv Morgan, what's your thoughts, man? She had a great match on Raw. The great vignette. Bring it up. Did you actually think she had a chance on beating uh, Becky, the man? No. So. <laughs> if you've been watching, if you if you're if you follow me on my TikTok and watch my lives and stuff, I've been saying for weeks that they're gonna that they need to put the strap on uh on Liv. I think it's only a matter of time. But man, I'm so over this whole roll up with the helping the ropes win. She beat Charlotte like that at Survivor Series. She beat Liv like that uh uh, uh on this past Raw or whatever. I don't know. It, Becky's not going to Becky is not going to lose until it's a pay-per-view. I think that makes sense. She's not going to lose. Whenever there's a title match on a Raw, I never there's like a 99% chance they're going to win. I always give that 1% in case there's like a weird botch or something, but she's not Becky's not losing unless it's a pay-per-view. 
and probably not until it's a major pay-per-view. Maybe Royal Rumble, and I, I don't know. But Liv, no. Liv needs the belt at some point. I'm ready for a fresh face to be a champion. I'm getting a little tired of Charlotte and Becky kind of running things. Not that I don't like them. I'm just looking for a fresh face to be in the mix. Um, but, yeah, I, I, there was no doubt in my mind that she was going to lose. I didn't, I didn't think for a second she was going to win. Um, but, yeah, I've, I've, I've been a huge supporter of Liv for weeks on months now that she needs the belt at some point. I, I'm a huge fan of hers right now. Yeah, I, you know me. I've always said that Charlotte and Becky are two women that they don't need the title to be relevant. Uh, right. They're so good without the title. I believe that Liv Morgan um, is probably the, the one that, that I could see as champion. The reason why I'm not going to make too much of a comment about it is because of this. We know how WWE is. If Liv Morgan is comes out next Monday on Raw and confronts Becky, hey, you grab the ropes, I want a rematch, and they're going into that kind of storyline, then okay, I'm going to get behind the, the Liv Morgan train. But if she comes out and doesn't say anything about it and they put her in some meaningless match that lasts five minutes or a segment, then they're doing the same thing they did with Cesaro. Everybody was complaining about Cesaro not getting his shot. He got his shot. And what happened afterwards, they put him on the back burner and they put him back in a mediocre spot, um, in, in the in the mid-card spot. So I'm, I'm going to reserve my, my comments on that because I don't know if they're going to go that route. I would like yeah. to see a new champion. I really do. I think it's too soon right now towards the the road to WrestleMania to, to do something that, that drastic. Because typically at WrestleMania, those titles will change hands. Or maybe the week after WrestleMania, those titles will change hands. So we'll see what happens on that, man. Yeah, why don't we, uh, in, in next week's episode after Raw, we'll touch back once they've kind of progressed the story a little bit. And we'll, we'll, we'll give more thoughts to that. We talked about it. We talked about NXT. We want to know what you guys' thoughts are on NXT. Where do they go from now? NXT 2.0. The black and gold is gone. It is gone. That door has shut, and it's all about NXT 2.0 with all the colors, and it looks like their number one star, the uncrowned champion, Braun Breaker. Yep, yep. As always, we appreciate you guys listening. If you're on Spotify, thank you for listening. If you're on YouTube, thank you for watching. But yeah, let us know in the comments what you thought. I'm going to plug the merch before we go. New merch, Curtain Call Podcast. we got the NWO style like that, you see. We also have a Wolfpack style in the red. Um, like I said, just drop a comment if you want any more details. We'll shoot you an inbox, um, you know, letting you know how you can get that. The website's going to launch very soon, um, but we're kind of just doing this by request form situation until we get that website up and rolling. We're going to have a lot more items besides shirts, um, but we're doing shirts right now. But, yeah, we appreciate everyone listening. Throw it up if you've got it too sweet. And, JR, just take it out, man. And, you know, we always kick out at two. Peace.